السلام علیکم and bismillah rahman rahim i hope you all are good this is noor with a third video about the content of geography so this time i'm going to tell you a little bit about the universe and the complete overview of solar system so let's start universe the word universe is derived from the old french word universe which in turn derives from the latin word universum so if you talk about its definition so universe is all about of space and time and their contents including the planets including the stars galaxies and all other forms of matter and energy so we can say the all type of things all type of uh, material or matter we see here is is a part of universe and universe is thought to be comprised of three types of substances first one is normal matter second is dark matter and the third one is dark energy so the normal matter consists of the atoms atoms that make up stars planets human beings and every other visible object in the universe <clears throat> so the point of remembrance is that that normal matter that all the things all the visible material that is found in this universe is the part of normal matter so if we talk about the universe so universe was formed 13.6 billion years ago and if solar system so solar system is 4.5 to 4.6 billion years old and as we discussed earlier in the previous videos that earth was formed 4.54 billion years ago so the, uh, so after the uh, establishment of solar system the earth was formed next the light year what is a light year so light year is a way of measuring distance of light in one year light year the word light year also indicates the light the light measurement in a year so it's a way of measuring distance that doesn't make such sense because light year contains the word year year which is normally a unit of time even so light years measure distance so the point of remembrance is that the light year measures distance so light travels at 1 lakh 86000 miles per second so in form of seconds you have to remember that light travels at 1 lakh 86000 miles per second it is a law it is a very really large distance so therefore a light second is 1 lakh 86000 miles and a light year is the distance that light can travel in a year that we have discussed earlier in the previous slide so what is the history of the universe we have discussed the uh the definition of the universe the light year so now we are going to discuss the history of the universe so what is the history of universe So the history of universe is basically related with the big bang theory. So the universe began with a hot explosion called the big bang theory. The aftermath of the big bang theory consisted mostly of radiation but as things cooled the elements hydrogen and helium formed. It is not of some importance so the thing that you have to remember is that that universe began with a hot explosion called the big bang theory. So who was the person who thought about the big bang theory as a hot explosion so an astron uh, uh, an astronomer george lemaitre george lemaitre was an astronomer who thought in 1927 that universe began with a hot explosion that is uh, that he named as big bang theory he said that big bang theory in big bang theory the, it is an idea that began as just a single point that expanded and stretched to grow as large as it is right now so he he thought that 
uh, that the universe started as just a single point and it continued to stretch and it continues to grow and like we can see it right now but he also believed that universe is still growing universe is still stretching so that is all about the big bang theory and that is the complete overview of the big bang theory so what is the evolution or evolving universe theory so we have discussed about the big bang theory and let's move to the evolving universe theory so firstly we if we talk about the evolutionary or evolving universe theories so the first thing we have to remember is, is primordial core primordial core is a core in which all of the matter of space all of the matter all of the energy of space is compressed in a primordial core it is a box we can say it is a box in which all of the matter and all of the energy is compressed so billion years ago this primordial core exploded billion years ago that primordial core in which the matter and energy was compressed it exploded and immediately after the explosion the early universe is composed of intense radiation and particles and what that intense radiation particles have let's see the intense radiation together with some more matter formed a rapidly expanding region called the primordial fire fireball so we uh, we see we have seen that in a primordial core in which all of the matter and energy was compressed was exploded so immediately after the explosion the early universe uh con is composed of radiations and particles and that radiations together with some more matter formed primordial fireball in time the matter broke apart into huge clumps and that primordial fireball broke into huge clumps and they, they become the galaxies and the smaller clumps uh, within the galaxies formed stars as we know that galaxies is the uh, galaxy is the is made of billions and trillions of stars so the huge clumps became the galaxies and the smaller clumps within the galaxies formed stars so big bang theory evidence for the theory as we have discussed earlier the big bang theory was considered as a single point of universe that expanded day by day so that was considered as big bang theory so what is its evidence First of all, we are reasonably certain that universe had a beginning. Yes, we had a uh, we have a certain belief that universe had a beginning. So, what is the beginning scientifically? So that was proposed by Big Bang theory. Second, galaxies appear to be moving apart from us at speeds proportional to their distance. That is called a Hubble's law. So, in the part of Big Bang theory, Hubble's law takes very Imp uh, important role plays very important role that Hubble's law is the observation that galaxies are moving away from the Earth at speeds proportional to their distance. So, in other words, we can say the farther they are, the farther the galaxies are from the Earth, the faster they are moving away from the Earth. So, that is called the Hubble's law that you have to remember in the Big Bang theory. So, what is the evidence uh, what is the um, reason of using Hubble's law in the Big Bang theory so we see that this observation supports the expansion of the universe as we have discussed earlier that uh, George Lemaitre uh, the astronomer who uh, who proposed the Big Bang theory he also discussed that universe will stretch uh, continually so Hubble's law supports the expansion of the universe and it suggests that the universe was one compacted compacted in uh, all of the space was compacted in the primordial core third if the universe was initially very very hot as the Big Bang suggests we should be able to find some remnant of the seed in 1965 this was discovered that a 2.725 degree Kelvin degree Fahrenheit 
it that microwave background radiation which pervades the observable universe so that was found in 1965 so we can say that big bang theory is certainly true and the last one is finally the abundance of the light elements hydrogen and helium found in the observable universe are thought to support the big bang model of origins so big bang theory is going to be very supported so evolution of the universe what we have said that uh, that the huge clumps were there that they become the galaxies and the uh, small clumps became the stars and the formation of the solar system and all the, and that thing is explained here in the evolution of the universe so what is a galaxy my favorite part a galaxy is a large group of stars outside of our milky way it is composed of it is made of billions to trillions of stars also may have uh, uh, also some stars may have gas and dust and the galaxy which is composed of millions to billions to trillions of stars can be of spiral can be of elliptical or can be of irregular shape so galaxy has about 200 billion stars or numberly if we talk about so galaxy has about 200 billion stars and lots of gas and dust and uh, the stars are mostly very spiral and it takes our solar system about 200 million years to revolve around one galaxy takes about 200 million years 200 million years of our solar system to revolve uh, around one galaxy so you have to remember this that in geography you have to um, take these points very serious so that is the milky way geocentric theory geocentric theory and the heliocentric theory are my favorite theories that in which you can uh, you can explain their meanings very easily that geo means earth and centric means center so this theory states that earth is at the center of the revol revolving planets and stars whatever the uh, planets whatever the stars are revolving so earth is in the center as you can see in the diagram the earth is in the center and the moon is revolving the mercury the venus the sun the mars the jupiter the saturn every planet is revolving but the sun is Uh, but the earth is in the center so that is called as geocentric theory it was proposed by the ancient greeks and was accepted for about 200 years just for about 2000 2000 for just for about 2000 years it was accepted and it wasn't correct and heliocentric theory so helio means sun and centric means centered so this theory suggested that sun was at the center of revolving as we have discussed in the uh, geocentric theory that in that the earth was in the center and helio in the as sun is in the center of all revolving planets and stars so this theory was first proposed by nicolas copernicus copernicus in 1543 and later proven by galileo in 1614 and this is what we believe on today so heliocentric theory is correct and geocentric theory is not correct so solar system solar system is a gravitationally bound system comprising the sun and the objects that orbit around it either directly or indirectly so solar so uh, in the universe we discuss that it is composed of all the planets it is composed of all the stars the galaxies the atoms the, all the visible objects found but in solar system it is comprised of the sun and the objects that orbit around it only that and uh, that area the objects and the sun that orbit around is is called as solar system and it is in constant motion with the planets and their moons comets asteroids and other space objects revolving around the sun so as you can see here the sun and then the four planets mercury venus earth mars 
then asteroid belt this is the belt and then after after there are the four other planets jupiter saturn uranus neptune and these are comets and asteroids these will be discussed later so terrestrial before moving towards the uh, mercury venus earth mars and the other planets uh, planets significantly uh, let's talk about the terrestrial planets so terrestrial planets are basically the inner planets as you can see in this uh, picture that uh, that before the asteroid belt the four planets um, in front of the sun are called as terrestrial planets and these are also called as inner planets um, because they are very close to sun but if we talk about the other four planets so they are called as outer planets as or jovian planets uh, because they are apart from the sun so terrestrial planets are the inner planets they are present in front of the sun and they rotate slower and they are very rocky they have no thick surface they have thin surface and they have no atmosphere no not at all and they don't have rings and they are relatively small and if you talk about the jovian planets the outer planets so they are gas giants so they are gas giants and they rotate faster relatively to terrestrial planets and they rotate faster they have thick atmosphere they have and uh, if we talk about the uh, terrestrial planets they have no atmosphere or it, it may have so it is very really thick so in jovian planets we see that they have thick atmosphere and they have no solid surfaces so dwarf planets dwarf planets in the solar system in 2006 the organization responsible for classifying celestial bodies the international so that there uh, is uh, not something very important to say about dwarf planets the thing you have to remember is that it is not a satellite it is a moon it is in orbit around the earth it is always in motion it is always motion and it always orbit around the sun and it has sufficient mass for its self gravity to overcome rigid body forces so it it has personally it has personally the force to that can overcome the uh, rigid body forces so it can be assumed that it has a hydrostatic shape means nearly round shape nearly but it can uh, it cannot be uh, completely round but hydrostatic shape means nearly round so it hasn't cleared the neighborhood around its planet so if we talk about the dwarf planets they are eris they are pluto homia make make and cirrus these are all the dwarf planets they have the uh, they have their own self gravity to overcome the rigid body forces so what is the sun sun it accounts for 99.8% mass of solar system so we see, uh, say that solar system is comprised of the sun and the objects that orbit around it so solar system is mainly uh, comprised of sun as 99 Point eight percent. It is a mass of solar system. It is one zero nine times larger than the Earth. It is one hundred nine times larger than the Earth. It is really larger. Average temperature is about fifty five hundred to six thousand degrees Celsius, and average distance from the Earth is about one fifty million kilometer. Planets. So let's move to our favorite thing that what are planets and uh, their features. So planet means wanderers in Greek language. They are called as wanderers. Farther the planet, greater the planet. As we have discussed in the Jovian or the terrestrial planets, that we have discussed the uh, terrestrial planets are small, are relatively small. 
So one complete circling or orbital path is called revolution and it rotates on its own axis. The one thing that is very important, the difference between the revolution and the uh, rotation. So revolution uh, that it uh, rotates, uh, that it completes its axis around any other body or uh, rotation is the complete the rotation on its own axis. So Mercury, first one is Mercury. Mercury is a dead planet and it could not hold atmosphere. Its rotation in 50, 59 days, revolution in 88 days and all that. And the first, that one main important thing is that Mercury is the smallest planet of all. You have to remember this the smallest planet of all that. And it is a dead planet and um, innermost and swiftest planet and the rotation and revolution we have discussed before next one is venus so venus is the hottest planet it is most brightest and also called as evening star it is also called as evening star and it also called as earth twin means its uh, size its density and its mass is co uh, comparably um same as of earth so, so um, average temperature is 470 degrees centigrade and it is uh, it rotates very slow uh, uh, and it rotates from east to west in a very slow rotation and if we talk about its temp uh, atmospheric pressure so it is 90 times higher than that of earth in case of size, density, and mass, it is uh, uh, same to Earth, but if we talk about the atmospheric pressure, so it is 90 times greater than that of Earth. Earth. So Earth is the third planet and it possesses many unique qualities. One, one of that is that, one of that unique quality is it has physical environment in which people can survive in which we live so it has physical environment it rotates in 24 hours and it completes a revolution in 365 days and it has one moon called as luna mars it is closest to support hardest forms of life it is closest to support hardest forms of life it can support uh, the survival and White polar ice caps. This water is present in where uh, water is present in traces, and uh, as it can support life, so it has water present in traces. And it is very really dry planet. It is reddish rock and sand and soil. It is second smallest planet, as we have discussed earlier that Mercury is the smallest planet and the Mars is the second smallest planet, and it is called as red planet and it has two moons. The next one is Jupiter and Jupiter is the largest of all the planets and one third the size of sun. It is the largest planet and it consists of the one tenth the size of sun. It completes the rotation in 10 hours and its largest moon is Ganymede. The, the things you have to remember uh, really seriously. The next one is Saturn. It is second largest planet and it has rotation in 10 and 1 by 4 hours. And it has 62 moons. 62 moons and a Titan moon has its own atmosphere. The uh, its uh, moon named as Titan has its own atmosphere and uh, com uh, completely it has 62 moons. The seventh one is Uranus and it is surrounded by polar circle circling rings polar circling rings and it is also known as green planet methane it, uh, it has methane in its atmosphere and it rotates on its size site and the last one is neptune and it is twin planet to uranus as we have discussed earlier that uh, the um, venus is twin planet to earth so neptune is twin planet to uranus by polar circling rings and it, it also consists methane in atmosphere. So there are also uh, some other objects in the solar system, comets and asteroids. So com um, comets are often 
compared to large dirty snowballs and they are called as frozen gases rocky and metallic at materials frozen gases vaporizes when near the sun and all these um, properties you have to remember in the part of comets and if you talk about meteorites so they are called as meteor meteors when they enter the earth's surface earth's atmosphere they are called as meteors and these are also called as meteorites when they are found on earth when they enter in the earth's atmosphere they are called as meteors and when they are found on earth's surface they are called as meteorites a meteor shower occurs when a earth count encounters a swarm of meteorites associated with a comet's path so uh, that is all about the universe and the uh, solar system i hope you will uh, you will uh, you have get it all my point and all my uh, lecture so uh, we will meet in the next video till then take care allah hafiz